So I gave you this poem um, you fit in to me by Margaret Atwood um, as an introductory activity, and I ask you to take just a couple of minutes after you read and kind of jot down your thoughts. What do you think it means? What's happening? It's a very short poem, um, but there's a lot of meaning packed into what the author says and what she doesn't say, what you can make inferences from. So I wanted to talk you through analyzing a poem analyzing literature, seeing beyond what the writer um, is is putting out on the paper. Before we before we talk about the um, the obvious and the poem itself, I want to make just a really quick point. If I if if I were to point to a male a student in this room, um, what would one obvious difference b between how I read the poem and how he read the poem be? Well, I have a female perspective. He has a male perspective. He's clearly reading it differently than I am. Um, if I pointed to a female in the room, okay, what's one obvious difference between how you read the poem and how I read the poem be? Well, she's younger than I am. I'm old enough to be most of your mother's. So, I have an older woman's perspective than a younger female reading the poem. So, are any of us wrong in, in how we read and how we interpret? Absolutely not. That means the important thing for you to know about this entire semester is that literature is very subjective. I get something completely different than that male student or that female student does, but none of us are wrong in our notion of meaning. We can impose our beliefs and our will upon a text, but we have to be able to back it up with evidence. And that's going to make all the difference in right or wrong answers in this classroom for this semester. So, we did this, you did this raw, dry read. I didn't give you any background information on the author because I didn't want it to color your beliefs and your in, in, your opinions. So, Margaret Atwood is called the prophet of dystopia. Um, her works examine dystopic societies like The Handmaid's Tale. You know, it's recently been um, adapted into um, a television series, um, which is really great, by the way, if you haven't had an opportunity to watch it. Um, and Big Brother-esque governments. She is a proponent of strong real women protagonists that fight against the grain of what society is, expects and demands of women. So, let's look at it. Let's read it first. You fit into me like a hook into an eye, a fish hook, an open eye. Initially, this seems to be some kind of silly conventional love poem, but when you look at it deeper, She's really describing the helplessness of pain and pain of being trapped in an unhealthy, dysfunctional relationship. Well, where'd you get that from, Miss Lloyd? You fit into me. That lover is like a perfect fit. And that can be on many different levels. Um, obviously, how she intended it to be may not be exactly how you read it. You may have already jumped to a more... Um, physical type of relationship idea there, but basically this lover of this woman's is the perfect fit. Everything about them fits right. And then we move to that second phrase, like a hook into an eye. Well, we have uh, a hook, an eye hook, um, which is a door fastening device. So you, um, you flip the little hook into an eye hole, an eyelet hole, or a clothes fastening device, a uh, hook and an eye closure on a sweater or a shirt. Um, it's a, it's a little, uh, girls, if you've ever worn a formal dress, you may have seen um, an eyelet um, closure with a hook on the back of a dress. The significance here is that for a hook and an eye to work, it has to be exact. It has to be an exact fit. If they're too far spaced apart, if they're too close together, it will not fasten correctly and therefore be um, off kilter in some way. It may not close at all. Um, and then there's that space. And even this space uh, is purposeful. There's a gap there. Gaps usually in poetry signify a change or um, 
uh, in the mood or the tone, um, in the meaning. And then you have the two lines, a fish hook, an open eye. So a fish hook, pretty graphic um, idea that if you've ever seen a fish uh, hook, you know that it has multiple little barbs coming off. The purpose being that when a fish bites it, it sets into the flesh inside the mouth so that it cannot get free from the line. Um, and an open eye. So we've moved beyond a hook and eye closure. And now we're talking about a literal hook, a fish hook, and an open eye. Okay. So at first glance, these two are made for each other, right? They have a, a secure relationship. They were specifically designed to work together. You fit into me like a hook into an eye. It's a perfect fit. Perhaps that's how it was in the beginning of the relationship. However, the break there, the, the space, could be the passage of time. Maybe that's how it was in the beginning, but now, upon time passing or further examination or a closer look, their perfectly suited hook and eye becomes his fish hook in her open eye. So if you've ever hooked a fish accidentally through the eye, you know that this is a pretty gory symbolism here. This shift there suggests that the speaker is trapped. She's taken the bait of his hook. She's entered this seemingly perfect relationship only to discover later that she's unable to break free of the bond that he has her in. The open eye could symbolize that she clearly sees the situation. She's hurting, she's in pain, but she's physically unable to regain her independence, to break free from this relationship. And so I've, I've taken that now and I've broken it down for you. Um, and that is the line of thinking that you're going to want to follow this semester. Look beyond the words, even the, the, the missing punctuation, um, the, the lack of capitalization in the title, everything that the writer does is specific for the purpose. It's embedded with meaning. And so we took that four lines and we broke it down into something much more dark um, and, uh, and powerful than an initial reading of the poem as a kind of a silly love a love poem. So I hope that you were able to kind of pick out, if you weren't able to go that in depth, that's fine. But I hope that you realize that there was a change. Um, there was a shift in the initial part of the poem and then the, the end of the poem. Okay. So I'm going to kind of switch gears. I'm going to give, uh, I want you to pull up the handout on, um, on finding your academic voice. And I'm going to go over that next in uh, your um, in your next screencast for this unit. So that, that paper that I'm going to give you is, is very important. You may want to print it out. Um, it's going to be kind of like a Bible for you to how to approach academic writing. So we can break down, we can analyze, but now we have to be able to write about it in a meaningful way. So I'm going to end this screencast and we'll pick back up with um, finding your academic voice.